Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about how to fit in common subjects in your homeschool. So if you're like me, you are so passionate about all the beautiful, enriching, living subjects that a Charlotte Mason education has to offer, but you're a little unsure of how to incorporate all of these beautiful, wonderful subjects. Um, that was something I really struggled with the first year, and now this is my third year using the Charlotte Mason method, and I think I finally figured out how to incorporate all those wonderful common subjects. So what are common subjects? Um, these are things like composer study, artist study, art instruction, solfege, modern language, brush drawing, folk dancing, hymns and folk songs, all of those wonderful things that you want to engage in as a family, but you're just a little unsure of how this should look day to day. How do you fit it all in with your morning timetable? So here are a few tips on how to fit all of those in. So something I love to do is, um, for example, picture study, we incorporate that in our morning timetable. Now, picture study does not have to be as intense as you make it. You really are just sitting down and getting your children familiar with the painting. Pro tip, don't ever post them all at once. Only get them out one at a time as you've introduced the new ones. But post them where you guys spend your a lot of your lesson time. So this is our homeschool room. We spend many, many hours in here each week. Whatever term artists we're studying, I like to display those paintings and really get them top of mind. But fitting it in, I always leave a slot in the morning timetable for it. Um, and if for some reason I don't, I will pull it out during tea time. And we'll talk about tea time in just a minute. Um, something you can do to make sure you get in composer study is I like to play um, the composer that we're studying during lunchtime. And so every day at lunchtime on my phone here, I have the Spotify playlist for the composer that we are studying. Before I begin preparing lunch, I will just quickly hit play on that composer study playlist and play through the songs that we've already listened to. Um, and then later on in the week during our little notebooking slot in our time, table we can do a specific composer study lesson about you know the specific piece if we're introducing a new piece um, we can read a little bit of the biography um, and I do have videos coming out on how to implement picture study and how to implement composer study so um, yeah, it's it's just a lunchtime composer study has been helpful um, just to listen to it and get it into our heads each day. If you guys are doing a brush drawing lesson, it's also helpful to just play um, your composer during the brush drawing lesson just to have some beautiful music to listen to. Um, another tip is sort of for those hymns and folk songs, um, I actually really love having a morning time. If you look at my timetable video on my channel, you can see that every morning we begin with a hymn, a scripture, a poem, and then we go right into our morning lessons. But that little tiny version of morning time allows us to hit the folk songs um, because we do folk song Friday. We sing our hymns for the term every morning. And so a lot of CMEC families and a lot of other families don't really do this. Um, but I find that starting with those and, and the scripture and the poems, the poetry, um, it really does help to get just the day started singing together. It's hard to start in a bad mood when you're singing. So that's a really useful way to get those in. But I also like to make playlists, like I said, on Spotify for our hymns, our folk songs, and our French songs. Now, if you're doing Spanish, you could do the same for your Spanish songs. But um, we are studying French, and so I will make a French playlist and I kid you not, the reason my kids know those songs so well is because when we're in the car, we are listening to them and we're driving for, you know, an hour to wherever we're going. We will put on all of those songs, the hymns, the folk songs, the French, and it's just part of our family culture that we're like incorporating those even in our running errand days. Um, we're still getting those common subjects in and it really does um, just take a little bit of pressure off mom to get it done if you can't do it in the morning for some reason. So, um, let's see, 
The next thing is the family read alouds. This was something that I wanted to implement in the mornings and sometimes we do, but more often than not, we were not getting to our family read alouds for literature. And so I actually started doing those at bedtime and the bedtime family read aloud has been a game changer. We have been, we literally read a chapter a night and some of the books, like we just finished E.B. White for term three for my form 1A student, which is second grade. Um, and we literally read through Stuart Little in like 12 nights because there's only that many chapters in that book. Um, and so now we um, have almost read all of the E.B. White works that we needed to do for our term. And even though the, though the term has ended, we're continuing on. So having those nighttime read alouds, um, the for the family read alouds, use those books instead of, you know, the random picture book that you were going to read or still read picture books. I'm a huge advocate for that. You can also use the literature that your Charlotte Mason curriculum provides as the family read aloud. And that way you're hitting that common subject. Okay. The next thing that I want to discuss is afternoon poetry tea time. Now, this is something that a lot of people think is so idealistic, um, and there are ways to implement it where it's like really, really beautiful and extravagant, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you can grab some grain-free cookies <laughs> from the pantry um, and literally just a, a bag of cookies, put them on a platter, um, you know, make a pot of tea real quick, and then pull out your poetry, pull out your composer study lesson, or your artist study lesson if you didn't get to it that week. It really just provides a way for children to gather all in the same space um, and mom as well. Like who doesn't say no to cookies or even just like a veggie platter. I have found that if I serve any sort of food on a big platter, it just somehow just gets annihilated. It could be like artichokes and my children would still say, oh, it's on a platter, okay, you know. And it's just something about the presentation of it <laughs> that um, really draws them to the platter. So put some food on a platter, make a pot of tea, sit down. It does not take a long time to get this stuff done. I promise you, once you do it, you'll feel so good that you got to get your artist study lesson done for that week. Um, and it just allows you as a little bit, it allows you a little bit of catch up um, if you need it. So I usually do a poetry tea time about once a week, sometimes twice. Um, we really like to do a baking day as part of our common subjects. My daughters love to bake with me. And so we usually do that once a week too. Um, in my motherhood group, it's called Charlotte Mason Motherhood. It's on Patreon. You are welcome to join. I have it linked in the description. I have a um, afternoon day in the life where we like do like a little poetry tea time and a brush drawing lesson. There's like an actual video of me doing that with my kids. So you can see what that looks like for us. Again, it's not super extravagant. The kids know the routine, but um, yeah. So hopefully that's helpful for you all. And then another thing um, for hitting that art instruction this was one that we really struggled with the art instruction lesson just because I planned too much um, and I was finding that we weren't getting it done because it was a little overwhelming so I found that if I only focus on one mode of instruction so my first year I tried to do clay work brush drawing and chalk drawing all in the same term and so instead I would just focus on one mode okay every single Monday afternoon we know we don't have library day that day. We know there's no ballet lessons. We know we don't have nature study club. We have time to sit down and do our weekly art instruction lesson because we're always home on Monday afternoons. So that is our art instruction time. It's only 30 minutes and you will be so happy that you sat down to do it. I think half the battle of getting these common subjects in is really just sitting down to do it and working up the um of the energy to set out the supplies and and get it done so um, once you sit down you'll find that everyone is enjoying themselves so much and so um set aside a 30 minute block on one day specific day same day every week the children know oh it's monday afternoon we are doing our brush drawing lesson this monday or clay work or whatever it is you choose but only choose one just focus on one at a time for now it'll keep things easy for you and keep your overwhelm from getting too high. Well, I didn't touch on folk dancing and Swedish drill. These are things that we incorporate in our transition time during our morning timetable. 
Um, and I just keep the guides handy. That way, when I know it's time for me to sit down and work on it, I just have it handy. I can pull it out, go through the Swedish drill routine. Um, something that I really find useful, and I've talked about it in my other videos, is my term planner. Um, my motherhood group has this for download in it, so I would definitely recommend checking that out if you want to join it and you get access to all the videos I've filmed. There's a ton of day in the life videos on there. There's a summer planning video um I even filmed us on like Christmas Eve one time <laughs> like our family um it was sweet but yeah so you can go check that out but the term planning sheet is helpful to get those common subjects planned out and that way you're not just kind of flying by the seat of your pants <laughs> when it comes to um such a Charlotte Mason thing to say right <laughs> when it comes to your common subjects so hopefully this uh, video was helpful for you all. I wish you the best of luck in your new school year. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.